Hi everyone, this is Trishti Jain and uh, this is a video which is a part of a larger series that I'm creating of anybody who's getting into Georgia Tech and wants to know what are the different courses that are offered, how do you decide among the specialization, um, which subject should you choose, especially in your first semester, how do you navigate the whole process and anything and everything about my experience being a student at Georgia Tech. So let's get started. So let's dive right into it. The very first thing that you should know about is that the Georgia Tech MSCS course is a 30 credit course and each class at Georgia Tech is three credit seats. So effectively you should do about 10 courses in order to achieve those credits. Now, in order to achieve these credits, you can either do it through different courses, which are three credit each, or there are seminar based courses as well. There are a few research opportunities. The very first thing you should head on to is the official Georgia Tech website. This is the place you should first head to, uh, to see what are the exact requirements you have. So if you go to cc.gartech.edu slash degree hyphen program slash master hyphen master hyphen science hyphen computer science, um, this is the landing page that you'll come into. Now, um, uh, along with everything else, like how do you actually take care of your degree, pay the tuition and everything, the thing that interests us the most is about um, admissions and you are already into Georgia Tech. Uh, I'll skip over this part, but I'll have a separate video about getting into Georgia Tech and how do you get into such a great school which has great research opportunities, great industry opportunities as well. Coming down to what you should do, the first one thing you can do is go through the handbook. This is a handbook link that you'll find on the official website. And if you go through it, you'll get a sense of what exactly is the course structure like, what are the expectations out of students, how should you go about choosing your courses, uh, excelling well in the course as well. I would leave this up to you to go ahead and explore so that you also have some reading material after watching this video as to what it is all about. But my video should be more than enough sufficient um, as of 2024 that I'm recording this of what exactly are the requirements, what should you should do. And especially being a MSCS student, I think there are a ton of things that we explore and get to know about it as we are doing the course. So those are the insights that I plan on sharing in this video as well. So the very first thing you'll see here are the program options. Now for program options, um, so there are three ways you can do your MSCS degree at Georgia Tech. The first one is the course option, then the project option, and then the thesis option. Now to summarize, um, before we delve into each of the different options that you can do for your degree, the very first one is the course option. Now in the course option, uh, it is 30 hours of coursework. So you effectively take 10 courses, three credits each, and um, that counts up to 30 courses. And in that, there are a few more restrictions, like you need to have 24 credit hours of CS or CSC courses only. And uh, though, and oh, you should have uh, 6,000 to 8,000 level courses of CS and CSE credit. This is like the bare minimum requirement that is required in order for you to apply for graduation for the graduation request to be accepted and then you being awarded the degree. The second option is the project option. Here, the difference comes out is that you have to do only 21 hours of classes. So that means 21 by 3, 7 classes is all that's required, not 10 classes. The thesis option is uh, 18 hours of coursework. So um, six classes are what is required, that's it. So all of this depends upon the path that you want to choose. Are you somebody who's more interested towards going to the course option or more interested towards going to the project option or the thesis option. Now let's dive a bit deeper into each of these. The very first one being course option, that is what I'm doing as well. And uh, most people at Georgia Tech tend to prefer the course option because you get to learn a lot of different things. And for example, right now we have new classes added about um, human AI, uh, human machine learning, LLMs, uh, GPUs, um, algorithms. So depending on your interest area and the way the world is changing, the course is very up to date. So you'll be able to choose a lot of more things in that scenario. Uh, that's why I chose to go with the course option. But that doesn't mean that you don't get a chance to do research. I'm also doing research at a lab. So I'll tell you how that works in into my course option as well. As a part of the course option, you have to do 30 hours of coursework. and. Uh, 
these 30 hours you cannot use any of your project or thesis hours into this but you will be able to take different classes so this fact please take 10 classes three credits each and you, you would be done with your degree of course uh, maintaining the gpa requirements and things like that the second is the project option um, in the project option it, this is good for somebody who wants to build a long project along their masters and uh, especially if you don't have a lot of experience um, like working experience industry experience and you want to have a big long project like about that spans about a year then this is an option that you could choose here you have to do 21 hours of coursework and a nine hour project so nine hour doesn't mean that you spend nine hours this this is nine credit hours worth of project so again if you see 21 plus 9 equates to 30 so the overall goal is to reach 30 credit hours now that could be done in different ways and um, you need to have an advisor under whom you will be actually doing the project you need to have like your goals your checkpoints and you and your advisor decide upon that um, and these nine credit hours of class as well get registered as a class you get a different permit for it and based on that permit you are able to register for the class that you're devoting those many hours in that particular semester for the project and that's how you are able to um, complete these hours and also progress towards your project in this again uh, the total credit hours required are 30 out of which cs6999 uh, this is the class you would register uh, for nine credits this does not have to be in a semester it generally is over two or three semesters you would take three three credits every semester and work towards your project and apart from that you would also do 21 credits of classes uh, each class is uh, generally three credits so you would take seven classes in order to complete this and the, re the additional requirement the difference as compared to the course option is since you have 21 out of these your at least 15 hours should be CS and CSE courses and um, that is uh, have, that has to be at a graduate level that is at a 6000 to 8000 so the 6000 to 8000 are like course numbers um, for example like if you see like thesis has a course number of CS 7000 um, different courses have different numbers so that number uh, kind of also indicates if it is a graduate level class or an undergraduate level class so being a graduate degree the classes should be graduate level the last is the thesis option wherein you have 18 hours of coursework and a 12 hour thesis in this um, again the same logic you would register for CS 7000 um, multiple semesters in order to achieve uh, progress towards your thesis as well as achieve the 12 credits that are there and out of the 18 credits of coursework that you have to do 15 is the minimum requirement of CS and CSE courses now um, another additional thing is that uh, uh, this is not the only requirement you also have to have one specialization at least so there are 11 specializations that um, Georgia Tech offers and you need to structure your courses take courses such that you are able to satisfy at least one of the requirement of the specialization that is there um, let's head to specializations so uh, for specializations if you see uh, this is the website it is uh, cc.gartic.edu slash MS Computer Science Specializations. And here, if you see, you'll find a ton of material on this. The best way is that um, think about what exactly is it that you are more interested in, what is something that motivates you, because it's graduate level coursework. So it's going to be a lot of workload. And you would have a lot of assignments, a lot of projects, a lot of um, small projects, long projects, like semester long projects, short projects which have to be done in a week. So you need to pick something that interests you so that it is fun along with learning for you. Um, so there are 11 specializations. If you see um, this computational perception and robotics, this computer graphics, computing systems, high performance computing, human centered computing, human computer interaction, interactive intelligence, machine learning, uh, modeling and simulations, scientific computing, social computing, and visual analytics. Um, so out of these 11 specializations, you need to complete 
at least one specialization for example if you chose the very first specialization of computation perception and robotics so in order to achieve uh, completing the specialization the requirement is that you complete six hours of core courses and nine hours of elective in the core courses again there are different restrictions for example here you have to pick one class out of these listed classes and one class of this the total of this would be six hours for electives you need to pick three courses but since it does not see any restriction based on the subsection of perception or robotics you can choose three out of all of these so this was this would constitute like 15 credits uh, 15 credit hours for you uh, out of your degree that is half of your degree so out of the 30 credits 15 are dedicated towards your specialization now this becomes especially important if we come back here to the three different program options that are there there's the course option the project and the thesis the reason it is like minimum required hours of 15 at least uh, in project and thesis is because 15 hours are required for your specialization and whether you're choosing project or thesis or course you have to have a um, specialization now other specializations like uh, a very um, a specialization that most of people are interested in is machine learning so in machine learning uh, there are core courses you need to pick two core courses so you need to pick uh, one course of either machine learning or uh, computational data analysis and one more course out of uh, all of these courses generally people pick uh, graduate algorithms also an important point to note is that um, it is not necessary that all courses would be there every semester it is also possible and i've seen this firsthand as well that if a course was available in last fall it is not necessary that it will be available in the next fall as well there are a ton of courses which were available in fall of 2023 but they're not available in 2024 so you need to uh, be strategic about picking up your courses such that you are able to complete your specialization requirements along with progressing towards your degree. And coming back to the machine learning specialization, uh, the other are electives. With machine learning, there's a ton of choice. So for the core, you have to choose one of this and one of this. But uh, for electives, you have to choose three of any of the electives. Now, this is a list of different electives, classes uh, that are there. Uh, whether a class is a core or an elective, the workload is kind of the same. There's no other distinction apart from like the specialization uh, nomenclature that is there. In electives, you see about um, 10 to 15 classes here. But if you see here, this is something that I got to know about uh, later on um, during my time at Georgia Tech. So I would suggest that uh, this is like a golden part about all of this is the approved substitutions so if you click on approved substitutions you'll see that there's this huge list of courses i think this is about like about 30 to 40 more courses apart from the ones on the front page all of these are approved substitutions which can count towards the specialization in machine learning electives so if you take any of these courses you can have your during your graduation application you can have your academic advisor uh, use this as one of the electives so when you check out um, the current status of your degree on degree works it only includes these courses but if there's a requirement missing but you actually took an approved substitution since it's already approved it has the course has gone through the vetting process of whether it can count as an elective for machine learning or not and since it can count as a machine learning, it can count towards your degree. So that is my main suggestion to everyone is to choose your electives and core such that uh, you don't lose out on completing your specialization. Say you want to graduate in one and a half year, um, that is like in three semesters, you should have your specialization requirements done. Uh, and you should strategize in choosing your courses so that you're progressing towards your specialization requirements along with your degree requirements. Because imagine a case wherein you have to graduate. So any classes of your interest that are available that semester you can take. But if you haven't completed your specialization requirements, you cannot graduate at all in that scenario. So don't be stuck up in that um, sense and try and take in all the courses such that you are able to maximize the most and um, choose the specialization accordingly. Um, 
I'll uh, since this video is getting a bit long, I'll post uh, the remaining part in part two, wherein I talk about how should you structure your semester, how many courses you take per semester, um, how do you actually uh, balance out courses such that it is a mix of light and um, heavy courses and all of that. Um, I hope this video was helpful and I have shared my tips as well that I got to learn along the way. So all the best and let me know um, my DMs over Instagram uh, at the rate geeky earthian are open. Um, also I'm there on Twitter. I put in all the links here and you can drop me a message and I'll try my best and answer those. Thank you. See you in the next one.